face therapies here. I have my wonderful friend Tristan here today and um, we were talking recently about questions that uh, I get as a person who is psychic and uh, questions that you would like to ask a psychic and Tristan said oh I have lots of questions <laughs> that I would like to ask about what it is to be psychic and um, other people have contributed some questions as well so we're going to go for it and have a little bit of a discussion yeah. about that today Tristan's going to do a little bit of interviewing so thank you for having me on yeah. it's exciting very happy to have you. um I guess the first thing I and obviously I've known you for a while but yeah. one of the first things I wanted to ask you was like, what was one of your first memories of a psychic experience where you're like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a psychic? <laughs> yeah, sure. Hi, Linda. Nice to see you there. Um, look, the one that people would have heard me probably say quite a bit, but is a real standout to me because it was the first time I actually uh, realised that there was something happening to me that doesn't normally happen to other people I guess um, that I had heard anyone speak about anyway and that was when I jumped in my car I was about 18 years of age I jumped in my car and I started driving down to the local 24-hour uh, convenience store uh, well actually before I started driving I'd only jumped in my car something inside of me said to me shut the passenger side door and I was thinking to myself why shut the passenger side door? I never shut the passenger side door. And as I was having this internal argument in my own brain, my body of its own volition reached over and locked the passenger side door then. That was way before there was central locking. And, um, and then I drove down and I pulled up at an intersection and this uh, guy just jumped out of nowhere and grabbed the passenger side door and started to uh, try and open it and he was you know like screaming at me and I was like oh my god oh my god oh my god thank god I shut the passenger side oh door gosh. thank god um I you know just I was just like phew I'm really glad I did that and that was one of the first times I I really before that I kind of uh, you know, I think, you know, I was, I was definitely seeing ghosts. I was definitely seeing colors and stuff like that. But yeah, that was so a standout. Mm. You said at the start of that story, you heard like a voice. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> How does that sound? It's yeah. like, you know, what's... Yeah. Look, the thing I think that most people find uh, quite surprising and I, you know, it, it's possibly it is freaky <laughs> for other people I don't know is that, uh, that that voice that spoke to me wasn't a voice that sounded any different as such to uh, any other, you know, of the voices I hear in my own head. It is a bit freaky, Linda. It's, it's not like I'm hearing voices in my head all the time, don't get me wrong, that's not what I mean. But what I mean is that the sound of that voice didn't sound like somebody else's voice. Okay. It was my voice. Okay. Okay. So okay. it sounded like my voice, but it didn't feel like it was me. Okay, so the energy of it felt different to me. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So, I guess being an early experience at that time, it might have been hard to figure out like exactly mm. what was going on. But in essence, mm. is that what your experience of communicating with spirit yes. is now? My, my experience of communicating yeah. with spirits is um, with spirit is that now I communicate with spirit a lot. Um, I used to expect that you know a, a spirit would sound you know like an external person sounds yeah, to me yeah. but they don't it's it's the same voice because they're using my machinery mm, okay so they're communicating yeah. to me through my machinery my mechanics my body yeah. it sounds the voice sounds like me but the energy the consciousness of what's communicating with me feels quite different and each spirit feels quite different yeah. actually when you really start to when spend you, yeah, time wow them. yeah so could could anyone potentially do that, have that experience of... I, I think so. I think everybody has the capacity to be psychic. I mean, it's a question of nature versus nurture, isn't it, in some ways. But, you know, I definitely psychicness runs in my family. Um, the last person to actively use psychicness in my family was my dad's grandma. Apparently she had this little room out the back of her house and dad remembers people coming and going and she'd take them into this little room and she'd do these readings on them. And um, so, uh, you, you know, I think that it is something that I was born with in my genes, um, so to speak. Yeah. Okay, so it's a capability that yeah. I hold in my body, but mm. I think it's a capability that everybody holds in their body. 
And I, I, let me put it to you this way. Like a person might be, um, be born with an ability to sing beautifully. Mm, yeah. But even if they're born with that ability to sing beautifully, they still have to do training and they still have to work yeah. at refining yeah. that skill set. Yeah. And um, so I, I believe that that's the same here. And but guess, anybody can learn to yeah, sing exactly. and anybody yeah. can okay. sing. And that's the point that I want but to But maybe... Someone with a natural talent may become an opera singer who, you know, exactly. travels the world. Someone else may yeah. sound lovely, but yeah. maybe, you know, like, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So, one of the first things I think about when I contemplate psychic experience mm. is, like, I don't like to be ghastly, but, like, can mm. you see dead people? Absolutely. <laughs> and it used to scare the living shit out of me. <laughs> um, seriously. I, oh, my God. It took me a long time to not walk down the street and have a huge amount of people uh, and beings that were looking for help and support to not uh, follow me oh and God. want support. I know that sounds outrageous and to most people that probably sounds really crazy, but I'm being very truthful. Yeah. And um, because when something that um, you know, like like a ghost, when they can sense that you have the ability, one, to see them, two, to communicate clearly with them, then they 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 want to. Yeah. You know? They either want to because they need some support to help pass over, they're um, sometimes they're stuck in trauma and they want some support to help deal with that trauma, or they're desperately trying to get in contact with a loved one because that loved one is distressed. It, and is stuck in grief and pain and suffering. It reminds me of the movie The Sixth Sense. Like, mm. for me, that's such an iconic representation of, you know, I, I see dead people. Yeah. Um, is it like, because I, I don't remember it completely, but I, I see, mm. like, they have, like, you know, like the axe in their head. Are they in their death state? Or... <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting really morbid. No, but... no, no, it's a really good question, Tristan. And this is what this is about, the questions that you would really like to ask um, a psychic but um, you've never really had the chance to just <laughs> candidly ask them those questions without thinking that you're going to insult them or be rude. But, um, or whatever it might be that stops you. But, uh, yeah, some of them are downright... What happened to me right at the beginning when um, I saw this dude walk through a wall? He literally walked through the wall and walked towards me. He had a massive head wound and... Um, and the feeling, right, the feeling in your body is quite like you, as a person that's been doing this work for over 20 years now, I've, I've learned to be able to handle that feeling in my body when I'm communicating with all sorts of things yep. and not go into immediate adrenal overdrive yeah. and freak the hell out. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I said to, because at that, that time when I saw that dude, I had already started a relationship with my spirit guide and I said to my spirit guide, I do not want to see ghosts like that. I cannot walk around this world and live a normal life, hang the washing on the line, cook myself dinner, have normal conversations and go out to dinners and, you know, with my friends and stuff and see stuff like that. So I don't want to. And um, yeah, I, after a while of really holding that intention really strongly, I stopped seeing them so vividly. Okay. So yeah. now I mostly see them when they're trying to grab my attention. Yeah. But even okay. that, I've built some fairly solid boundaries to say that I can't, I'm not here um, to be of service to people in that way all, all the, time. the time like I, I it's, yeah it's just I could, there's I no could, life in that yeah. so you kind of the thing about being a psychic is that you have to develop your own moral code yeah. there is no you know ethic you know there's no code of ethics yeah. to pick up and yeah go and, this is the way I, I run my yeah life and practice but one thing I will say um, is an example um, that I think of a lot when it comes to communicating with people that pass over and I've had some wonderful communications with people that have passed over so I'm just gonna scroll down and see your comments there um, <laughs> <laughs> thanks Linda um, hi Cassandra um, yeah so one of the things that um, uh, an example when it comes to, yeah, and that's, sorry, I was going to say is I've had some wonderful communications with people that have passed over. I truly, truly have. And every time I speak to somebody that has passed over, I am really curious what it's like over there. <laughs> 
And yeah. So I yeah, me too. Always, yeah, exactly right. <laughs> and so I usually throw that question in somewhere along the line. What's it like over there? And I feel like it's not... The answer that I get is this incredible feeling right through my body. And it's just like, oh my God, amazing. And I feel like whoever I'm communicating with at the time says there is no language and there's no words, Trina, for me to be able to um, put that in, but feel this. And then I just go, wow. And I'm like, okay, that's fair enough. Because some things are a mystery some yeah. things we're not able to put into yeah. you know like a human logical understanding human yeah. concepts yeah exactly is mm. again going to that movie you know yeah. um, six sense or various movies i feel like yeah. you see a lot of like there's two kinds of ghosts there's like the and you've been talking more about this looking to pass over mm. looking to communicate yep is there also that malevolent polter you know like the, those evil is that yeah, I've experienced that, I'm, absolutely. Um, you know, one experience I remember was um, when I was lying in bed and I had the bedside lamp on and I was reading a book and then I decided to go to sleep and I turned the bedside lamp out and then I felt something sit on top of me and it sat on top of me and I tried to sit up and I couldn't. I was pinned to the bed. I literally could not sit up where I'd sat up just a few moments ago. And then I leant over and I grabbed the uh, bedside light switch and I switched it back on, but it wouldn't work. It just wouldn't work. Very, very horror movie. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And so I just did that thing. You know, those are the times where having a relation, built a relationship with your spirit and your soul is really important because I just went into my spirit and my soul self inside of myself and was just like this cannot do anything to me it can't it doesn't have a body it can't hurt me all it can do is make me feel scared yeah and it can make um my mind go into you know disturbing places or it can make my emotions go to crazy places but it can't literally hurt me and so then i waited it out And then I felt the relief come off me and I turned the light on, the light worked and I could stand up. And in those movies, Mm. because I feel like popular culture often kind of unintentionally will reference truth. Yeah. And often in those movies, Mm. you kind of, it's making me think what you're saying. Mm. The haunting starts small and when the fear gets to them is when Mm. that powerful being can amp up. Well, that being can amp up. So if that fear really takes you over, and sometimes it does, then that's when, um, you know, you're more susceptible to being influenced by yeah. whatever is around you. Which leads to, I see mm. Linda's put a question yeah. up, can you switch off your psychic um, ability at an early age due to fear? Absolutely, Linda. I reckon that I did, for sure. Um, and I think lots of people do, because you just, it's its so much to process, and there's no uh, support for that process. There's no language to use to process it, Linda. There's no um, common concepts or so forth to to process it. There wasn't for me. I probably I shouldn't speak for other people. There wasn't for me. Even though people in my family were having experiences, okay? My grandma, my dad's mum would come over and I would hear her talk about, she talked about when her mum died and her mum came and spoke to her afterwards and um, was in the room and different things like that. And I would, as a little kid, listen to my family have these talks, but the way that they spoke and their body language and everything showed me that uh, this wasn't something that you really talked about Mm. and this was something that you kept hidden away. Mm. And also, you know, as I was saying before about the feeling, like when you come into contact with a spirit that is really benevolent, the feeling in your body is amazing, okay? it's like whoa and um, when you come across a spirit that is a little bit more down the other end of that spectrum and is a bit more dense and dark and um, is um, you know not necessarily in control of um, their own energy themselves then um, it doesn't feel good it feels scary and I do think that yeah people do can kind of almost hardwire the connection burn out the connection or something yeah Yeah. so Maybe and when I'm, mine was yeah. sorry, when yeah. mine was opening up again, I was like, "No, <laughs> not again!" <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. Um, so moving from 
dead people because I feel like <laughs> I've occupied 10 minutes talking about dead people. Which I just is, want to say one more is, thing. Yeah, about no, do. Is that um, it depends on density, okay? Spirit is the lightest. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Michaela. Um, spirit is the lightest uh, form of energy that you'll ever come into contact with. True spirit, true spirit that comes from source. It's very, very light. As you move down into the material realm, it becomes denser and denser and denser, okay? And so the material body, the actual phys physical form is the densest form that energy takes. Sure. Sometimes when a person passes over, so for instance, um, uh, I had uh, an aunt who passed over and that aunt actually was named, um, I was named after her, Auntie Trina. <laughs> <laughs> and um, when she passed over, uh, before she passed over, she had this will that she had written that was very much to sort of try and control people with her money, was my opinion. Okay. Yep. Um, and when she passed over at first, she was so stuck in all these emotions and these feelings and these beliefs about what she wanted uh, to happen when she passed over. And that she came to me and she was talking to me and she was like, Trina, do this and call this person and do this. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, I don't know what to say to her. What yeah, is that? Yeah, how do you, to what your do you? Dead aunt. <laughs> and so eventually I just stopped listening to her because I knew that as soon as she moved over to the other side, I call okay, it, and she yeah. returned to the other yeah. side, then all that dense stuff would drop away. The dense emotions, the des dense, I mean, all those human aspects of self would melt away yep. and her soul nature would be the predominant nature from which she operated from and that she wouldn't care about that stuff anymore yeah. and lo and behold that's what happened she passed over eventually about a week later came back and um said thank you because i just kept pushing her towards the light is that like the mm. the crossroads where you know if she yeah. hadn't have been able to to keep passing over and had continued obsessing mm. about that need to control whatever it was that yeah. she was obsessing about is that what may manifest into an energy that's not as exactly and, tra and trauma can too okay yeah yeah, yeah. So, like, if you've, yeah. But don't forget that time works different in spirit. Sure. Like, it's very different to here. Yeah. So, you know, we might, you know, like, you might have heard about the house down the road that has a spirit that lives in it that's been there for, you know, our whole lifetime. That mm. could be two seconds. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Mm. anyway, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so. Let's move on. <laughs> Ghosts and. I feel like the next, my next question is. Mm. Hi, Kate. Possibly even a bit bigger mm. and more more tricky to ask or to answer. Mm. I, asking is easy, but answering mm. might be hard. Yeah. I then get curious about Christian ideas like heaven mm -hmm. or Buddhist ideas like reincarnation. What uh -huh. are, what would your opinion or experience be on those? Big questions, Tris. Mm, I know. Go for the big just you know, Tris. casual. <laughs> off, the, off the top of your head, so Trina. look. I actually never came at spirituality through a particular body of belief, um, whether that be yeah. a Buddhist body of belief, yeah. a Christian body of belief. Mm -hmm. um, I came at spirituality purely through personal experiences. I was having these experiences in my life um, that made me realize that there was something more to me. There was something more to me than yeah. what I knew myself to be as a human being and that there was something more to this physical world mm. than what any of us, you know, yeah. really were encountering yeah. on a day-to-day -day level. And, um, and after having so many experiences, um, I have, well, let me go to a story, actually. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, go back to a story, because yeah. stories are really good ways they are. to They're good ways to understand, aren't they? Yeah. Somebody very, very dear and close to me uh, had a near-death experience. This was um, in the early years of my career, um, and they weren't somebody that I was treating at the time, but someone very close to me had a near-death experience. They ended up um, going... Uh, going into the light and th this was their description when they first told me about it and they were in this maze and they would stop at various points in this maze and they would uh, re-experience different um, phenomenon that they had experienced in their life and then they um, in those moments were given an opportunity to 
uh, come to terms with those phenomena, mm. okay, and reconcile them and resolve them. They were companioned by, they, they said to me at the time that it was their grandma that companioned them through this maze. And then once they'd gone through a certain part of this maze, that somebody, uh, the, their grandma said to them, well, you can either come with us or you can go back to your family. And this person said, I'll go back to my family. So this person went back to their family and then, you know, there was a lot of pressure on them because they'd had this experience that sounded downright crazy. Yeah. And um, so this person then entered into um, a particular religion and then started to use that religion as a way of being able to give um, a level of credibility to their personal experience and I really understand why they did that yeah. because there was so much pressure that you must be crazy um, and so but then their story started to change and it was Jesus was the one that met them and took them through the maze um, I'm not passing any comments on that all I'm saying is that I'm sort of a bit got a bit lost in my own story there no I yeah uh, but um, all I'm saying is that, you know, I've I've read the Bhagavad Gita. I've um, have a Bachelor of Health Science in Traditional Chinese Medicine. We studied Taoism there. I speak Japanese, um, and when I was studying Japanese at university, we did sh we looked at Shintoism, Confucianism. Um, I've had some personal experiences with Christianity, but none of those bodies of thought in, have never encapsulated the t totality of experiences that I've personally had. Yeah. And, um, but I can understand that sometimes those bodies of belief and thought are an entry point for people yeah. to connect to spirit. Yeah. And so, beautiful. I think, I think it worked that, that way beautiful? for me a little bit. Yeah. I, um... I was brought up in a family that had, like, my immediate family weren't Christian, but I had a lot of mm. um, extended family who were a few forms of quite, quite a, people call extreme Christianity, mm. and so I had a great aversion to it. Mm. Um, but I had a need to understand spirituality, and I went to Buddhism at that time because yes. for me that was an access point that was free of all of that Christian-loaded stuff. And yeah. then over time, this is, you know, in my youth, Mm. Over time, I now really actually love aspects of Christianity mm. to help me understand the world and truth. And aspects of Buddhism stay with me. So it's like, I would say mm. they're different lenses to access the truth, but a lens is going to always yeah. focus you in an in a area as exactly. opposed to maybe encapsulate the all. I think so too, Tris. And I go back to what I said before, and that is that when I actually speak to people who are on the other side and I ask them what it's like there, that they just like, you know... I can't give you words. Yeah. So um, and so, you know, I think that um, in Taoism there is this saying, and I'm going to butcher it, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to give it a go. In Taoism there is this saying that says, uh, he or she, um, the person that says they know the Tao is the person who does not oh, know, know the that, Tao. Yeah. Okay? And it's slightly different to that, but pretty much that's the same thing. That, that's what I, I, I agree to as well. And I've found beauty in Taoism and Christianity and Buddhism in lots of different traditions, but I don't subscribe to one particular. I subscribe to my own personal experience. Mm. So one more question on, oh, well, maybe two yeah. <laughs> on this area. Yeah. Reincarnation. Reincarnation, my goodness. Where would you start? That's a whole topic to go into. But <laughs> let me just say that I've worked with lots of past lives with people. Okay, and I've so seen some phenomenal yep. stuff happen yep. when you work with past lives. Um, I remember that there was... Uh, because when a, a client comes to see me, I don't want to know anything about them. Yep. Because I don't want my human self to be um, already making, you know... Um, judgments and assumptions that makes it much harder for me to get the information a lot more clearly from uh -huh. spirit yep. so um, a client will come in they'll lie on the table um, I'll ask for the healing to start and I just start I'm scribbling notes down trying to keep yeah. up with all the information that comes through and one standout to me was this client that came in um, it's just something I can remember right now though and I was getting this lots of information about her and I was seeing this image of her where she was dressed um, I, I immediately could tell it was she was in France she was in a carriage she had these particular clothes on and then she was traveling along in this carriage and bang suddenly the carriage uh, was an accident and it 
flipped over oh, and wow. um, and I'm writing all this down and I'm thinking, I have to tell this woman <laughs> in, in 20 minutes when she gets off the table and she's crazy. going, oh my God, you're crazy. <laughs> and then she gets off the table and I start telling her the information and she says to me, uh, actually, the reason that I was coming to see you is that I have a phobia around driving car, my driving a car, and I really want to get my driver's license. Um, so that makes complete sense to me. And then we did some healings on her to resolve some of that uh, residual trauma that was held in her body, and she drives a car to, to this day. Wow, quite fine. So um, I guess without going into the academics mm -hmm. of reincarnation, yep. which yep. I'm happy to do a discussion on some other Maybe time. Maybe we can do a a special. Um, yeah, a special on reincarnation. Because then I have to talk about the difference between soul and spirit, which um, I'm happy to we'll, do. We'll deep but it's dive. a lot more involved. <laughs> um, I've encountered many different past lives in people and myself as well. And um, so that leads me to believe yep. that reincarnation is true. And I guess I'm assuming, to keep it simple, that yep. the purpose around reincarnation would be growth and like growth and learning I believe we... so I think that different physical experiences as human beings um, offer us different opportunities for learning and growth yeah so you know sometimes in this life I think to myself oh my god it's too hard I'm just gonna go <laughs> and live in a cave in India and just <laughs> meditate for the rest of my life and sit here with my spirit guide because that feels nice yeah um, but the truth is that you know I've most likely had lives where I have sat in a cave and meditated the whole entire time and I've got the growth and the learning from that and for me to actually go and live one of those lives now is for me to just sit in my comfort zone. Do the zone same thing again. And do something yeah. that I'm really, really comfortable with yeah. and not do something where I'm less comfortable with, sure. which is like coming out live here <laughs> and telling you guys my personal experiences. I mean, I think it makes sense even within... That concept of, of, you know, diverse experience creating growth, you don't even need mm. to go to reincarnation to know that that is true. Yes, because even in my it. own life, yeah. you know, when I've stepped into new places is when I've often felt like I've grown the most. So exactly. to, to, to look at reincarnation, it, it seems self-evident that therefore to step in into a entirely new life, an entirely new body, mm. culture, time, society would... Exactly. Yeah. And that's another thing that's really in, um, interesting too, is that um, what uh, the information that I've gathered... So I was laughing at Linda saying she's had that thought too, stop the ride, I want to get off. Yes. <laughs> Who hasn't had that thought? <laughs> um, so uh, one of the things that I've noticed in my communication with the healing spirits that I work with is that we um, as souls have... Uh, you know, we, we often choose, we are choosing the time period, the country, the body, um, the family and so forth that we are incarnating into for really particular reasons because we know by having that particular experience it's going to afford us certain opportunities for growth and what the human self may see as a terrible, terrible hindrance, the soul self might see as a great opportunity mm. for growth. And for me personally, I would never have developed my spiritual healing skill set if I hadn't as been as sick of a sick as a dog as I was, where I couldn't get out of bed. Yeah, right. And um, it was through being extremely ill that I um, uh, honed my spiritual healing skill set. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is one I already know a little bit about your answer yeah. and probably people who are tuning in now might have a sense as well if they've looked at much of your content online. Mm. You talk about... Well, answer, we'll answer some questions soon, guys, yes. just to let you know. So yeah, pop them in and... and um, some there. And also, there. if we you know, if we run out of time, we can always do a part two. We, yep. can, we can come back and... That's why I wrote part two question mark. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, there's yeah. so, many, so many questions. Mm. I know you speak a lot about angels. And I would like yeah, to ask you what that actually, <laughs> what is an angel? Can you, uh, sorry. Yeah, again, the simple questions. Um, you know, I've never particularly been drawn to angels, to be honest. As angels isn't something I've always gone around going, oh, angels, I love angels, mm -hmm. or anything like that. I, again, I came at angels because they were the spirits that were presenting um, to me 
in to support me and uh, and working with me when I was working with clients as well. I work with four my main archangels, Michael, Gabriel, Ure and Raphael every day in my clinical practice. And um, but my understanding of angels, I mean, I'm not really that concerned with the form that angels take. I think we um, many people get really, really sort of um, caught on this idea of what form do angels take. Do they really have beautiful wings? But angels are basically a form of spirit, okay. of spirit light. Yep. Okay. I am a form of material earth. Yes. Okay. I'm yep. a human being and my form is made of the matter of the earth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. sure, it has spirit in it. Mm -hmm. It has spirit in it to um, special ways, which we'll talk about in a minute. But um, but I main most human beings identify as their material form. Yeah, very much so. Whereas an angel is a form of spirit light, direct form of spirit light. So how? So what are the? What's the spirit in us then? Okay. So we all have our own personal spirit. Okay. Which is like our soul. Uh, our soul. In a simplified answer. Our soul and spirit are different but the same. Okay. I actually have a Facebook live on that. I'll okay, so we'll link comments. that one in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I don't want to get too caught on yeah. talking about that. But um, uh, and so I talk about when it comes to spirit. There's the word Tao. There's the word heaven. There's the word God. There's the word spirit. There's um. These words, to me, they are all referring to the same thing. Yeah. Um, and when I was talking about, you know, people passing over, they go back to this place from which they emerged in the first place. Source. Or yeah. Whatever. And that is, yeah. I call that spirit. Yeah. And I also call it source. Okay. Yeah. Um, and some people call it heaven and some people call it God. Sure. But, and some yeah. people call it nirvana. Yeah. But um, that place, I call it source because it's a place from which we as a spirit emerge and birth into this human body to have this human experience and when we die it's a place to which we return to okay and so i'm saying that an a this source mm -hmm. an angel is um a spirit okay they yes are a form of spirit light yeah okay. now I, you yeah. have a spirit i have a spirit that is a form of spirit light yes. And that spirit with Earth. is integrated into my body. Part of that spirit yes. is in my okay. body. Yep. Okay. And innovating my body mm -hmm. and adding to the life force of my body. Yes. But it's not the only thing that gives me life. Yep. Although I'm, I'm pretty sure that if it's not there, you cease to be alive. Okay. Sure. <laughs> vital. Yeah. So it's very vital. Yeah. Um, but it's part of the life force of, of Hill. And so we, are. to keep it simple, mm -hmm. Just if this is a good layman term, okay. as a human, we have this this spirit yep. from source, mm -hmm. and we also have met with earth material spirit mm. to create human. So uh, I actually uh, my mind just went off for a second there, so I didn't actually <laughs> don't worry. really hear exactly what you said. <laughs> I guess what I really I don't even know if I want to ask that again. I'm just asking. Okay, no, I'm going to move on to. You'll answer my question if I move on, I think. Okay. What I want to know is, is there a difference between, and I don't know where the, the line of crazy is, like I don't mm -hmm. want to ask stupid questions. Go for it, no question but, is a stupid question. So accepting and experiencing angels, mm -hmm. I'm, I guess what I was heading towards was what about then do we open up for dragons, for okay. mermaids, for like... All right. So yeah, that helps me answer your yeah. question. So the thing is that I don't experience spirit as an angel. I experience spirit as spirit. Yes, okay? okay. So when I'm at work or when I'm psychically communicating, um, I'm communicating with spirit, right? Yes. And that spirit might be an angel. Mm-hmm. Um, might be yep. an angelic form of spirit. Yep. Sure. Um, and they might be another form of spirit as well. But the way that I'm experiencing experiencing them first and foremost is light. Sure. I'm experiencing them as light and then sometimes I'll see a form as well yeah and when I see that form I have to admit when I see that with angels I do see wings okay, but yeah. I have seen wings on other spirits as sure. well not just angels. yeah so with other spirits is that where 
you'd encounter something like a dragon. Or okay, a... so dragons and fairies yeah. and leprechauns. Yeah, all of the elves mythology and of All those beings. kinds of things. Yes. So I refer to them as elemental spirits. Okay. Okay, so because the earth itself has a spirit. So I have a spirit, Tris has a spirit, you have a spirit. The earth itself has a spirit too. And that spirit is actually seen in nature. It's, it, it gives life to trees, to grass, to um, animals are, are different, you know, like us as human beings and animals, they have their own spirit as well. But the elements of the earth that then go to form trees and rivers and water and so forth, they have the spirit of the earth in them. And these other forms that you're talking about yep. that I don't have as much experience with, okay. say elves or whatever names we yep. might have been given to them, they are a spirit, a form of the earth's spirit. Okay. And they're often referred to as elemental spirits. Okay. I've had, I, there's just one that I have um, regular contact with is this dude that looks like a leprechaun to me. Whether or not he's a leprechaun, and we just use that language, right? Because you have to it's a word. A <laughs> you word. need a word. And so this dude presents to me when I'm at my parents' house, because he lives on their land, and um, he looks like a leprechaun, and he gives me good luck. And so, yeah, I, I'm really happy to you know, <laughs> To have him hang out. <laughs> to come and have a chat with him when oh, he comes over I for want a to chat. visit a leprechaun. <laughs> But is he a leprechaun? Who am I to say? I don't know. That's the same with angels. Do do I say that angels are 100% real? All I know is that I interact with some forms of spirit that we commonly refer to as angels. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I have two more and then I think yeah. we'll just and chuck it out. We've got a w yeah. one comment question. So is there just a standout experience as a psychic like a you know just a standout story to you that mm. that people would be interested in or that made a big impact the thing is that i am having psychic experiences every single day sure um i work as a spiritual healer i have a busy practice um i'm using my psychic skill set every day i can't really think of I was going to use um, an example of that past life with the car, but I've already used that. What um, about um, the person you helped recently? Yeah, okay. So recently um, a client and friend of mine uh, was going to... Because mostly I use my psychic um, skill set in regards to health and well-being. That's, yeah. that's my area yeah. of interest. I can use it in any area though. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I sure. can literally tune in to anything because I'm um, become, I've built this psychic channel where I'm able to interpret energy. Mm -hmm. I'm able to interpret energy and light and read it with um, a level of accuracy that I have honed. And that is why my clients come back and back to me, I think. And I'm, I have a level of curiosity, you know. I'm, I'm like, why is that like that? And what sits behind that? And I ask lots of questions to elect as much information as I can so that I can pass that on to my clients. Yeah. But, um, and I'm, I'm a curious mind. Um, I was reluctant to be a spiritual healer because I always considered myself to be a very logical person and a math science kind of person. So it took it a while, it took me a while to actually integrate it into my identity and personality. But to come back to your question is to say that um, yeah, so this um, friend of mine recently was uh, advertising a job, and they uh, had wanted to run past me the different candidates to see whether or not they were actually suitable for the role and whether or not they synchronized with this person okay. as a boss. Yeah, sure. And so this person advertised this job, they collected about 25 names, um, we did, I went through them with my guidance and we, um, we said yes and no and cut that list down to about half. And then I tuned into each of those people to ascertain their um, suitableness for doing this job in regards to their personality and their skill set and so on and so forth. And then I uh, received information from my guidance and I gave this to uh, the person I was working with and they scribbled down notes and then they interviewed the people 
and then they trialed a couple of people. Anyway, cut a long story short, that, that, that client, a uh, friend of mine, came back to me and said, oh my God, you would not believe how accurate that information was, Trina, that you got from Spirit about each of those people. So incredibly yeah. accurate. One of them um, was really, I said that they were really, um, oh, I think something about detail was really important to them. And she said as soon as they came in, it was obvious. They were asking such incredibly detailed questions about everything. And so um, I never actually take it for granted, psychicness. Um, it's, it's something that I might experience every day. And, um, but I still, you know, tune in, receive information, tell it to the person. And when the person goes, oh, yeah, that's, you know, that's extremely accurate for whatever reason, I'm still like, oh, wow, so I got <laughs> lucky. <laughs> <laughs> can, can you read people's minds then? Is that what you're doing there? Or? Well, it's not that I'm reading a person's mind. I'm reading their energy. Okay. okay. So I'm, I'm reading like I can't. If I want to read your mind, I have to concentrate really, really hard to listen to your thoughts in real time. Okay. Okay. And I have to concentrate yeah. really, really hard to not listen to my own thoughts in real time. <laughs> <laughs> to do that so you know it's actually not that much useful information i'm sure. gonna get from listening to your thoughts in real time but it is something you could if i try really really hard yeah yeah but, but it's not i just I, it's not really worth it tricks yeah. it's it's yep. like i've learnt to receive the information that's useful Sure. And not be directed by my own human need to receive yeah. the information that I've decided is important. And that's what being guided is about. I think sure. that when you're working with spirit, it's really important to be guided. And if you're being guided only by your human self, yeah. then you can get a bit lost. But if you've built a really strong, yeah. solid relationship with your own spirit, your own spirit light and your own soul nature, then those parts of you can direct the way that you interact with spirit yeah. and the way that you interpret the information that you receive. And that's really important. And I actually run a five week course on that yeah. to teach people how to um, integrate their human nature, um, their, their material body, their human identity, their soul nature, and their spirit light into their sense of self. So that at any one point in time, you are as equally balanced before the, between those four realities of self as you can possibly okay. be. Okay. Well, let's just go to one Good question. Kate. Yeah, Kate's got a big one. If mm. you want, you can tackle that. I was going to say we'll go to Michaela, mm. who's asked, mm. any advice on being brave enough to follow mediumship as a career? Yeah, look, you know, Michaela, it, it, it does take courage. It really, really does, to be honest. And... Um, you know, because I'll give you an example, actually, and this is a really good example to um, to, to illustrate that point, Michaela. All right, sorry, I got um, Tristan was looking. At questions <laughs> I was, I I was pressing buttons. <laughs> so I had um, a client. Uh, one of the most memorable, um, unhappy experiences I had as a psychic spiritual healer was the client that came to see me. They had been referred to me by another practitioner. They had um, back pain that they had been experiencing for over 10 years and they had tried many many different types of therapy and they weren't getting any um, relief and so they came to see me I got them up on the table I knew nothing about them right it takes courage to start from knowing nothing about the person because you're like my god what if nothing happens but Michaela something always does something always happens and so the person got on the table um, I start down speaking to my guides, all this information is coming through and I get shown their back, I get shown lumbar vertebra, you know, for example, four to five, I get shown that there's an old slip disc injury in there, that there's an old fracture that sits deep in the spinal, all this very detailed information, right? I'm scribbling it down. They get off the table, I start telling them what has come through and say to them that it, um, it will take eight treatments to reduce your pain. Not to get rid of it, it will take a heck of a lot more than that to get rid of it, but to reduce your pain, it will eight, take eight treatments. And that person at first was quite, you know, oh, wow, all right, okay, and was a bit stunned because they were like, oh my God, the psychic's actually psychic, <laughs> right? Because that happens quite a bit. And um, 
And then they went away and then they came back for their first session. They already felt better. Their back was already feeling better. Um, but um, they couldn't, they just couldn't handle the idea and started asking me lots of questions. How did you do that? How do you know that? You know, kind of like basically what tricks are you playing on me here? It's like, well, dude, mm. what tricks could I be playing on you? Because yes. it's not possible that yeah. I could have just pulled that information out of and nowhere. And you're the one telling me it works. Exactly. So. <laughs> You've seen the x-rays, you know, yeah. and, um, and then a, a few treatments came in and then we got to this point where I called the blueberries um, versus strawberries argument. <laughs> That's my shorthand for it. Where the person said to me, um, I say, okay, so, you know, they, the person actually started getting very angry at me. This work doesn't make sense to me. I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't know how to explain it. Mm. You know, other than the normal way that I explain it, I don't know how. This work doesn't make sense to me. I should not be getting better. Oh. Got very, very angry. And then said, oh, well, I believe that my back's getting better because I've started eating blueberries. <laughs> And that's what happens though. People start rationalizing yeah. it. They're like, okay, well, Something I actually else. think that my stomach is better now because I started eating strawberries every day. And I'd be like, okay, so you're in stomach pain for 10 years and you were eating strawberries during that time and your, your gut didn't get better kind of thing. And, and I understand why people do it, but it becomes untenable after a while when you're working with them as a client. I don't want to argue with my clients every day about whether this stuff is real or it isn't real. Yeah, okay? of course it not. Just, we just get on with and do the work. And um, so, Michaela, I haven't really answered your question, I realise that, but, you know, it takes courage. Um, and the only way that you develop your skill set, Michaela, is by doing. So what I would encourage you to do is to just start, um, you know, there's Kate here has asked a few questions and I'm sure Kate won't mind me saying, the beautiful Kate Watts, uh, Kate, I'm not gonna pronounce her uh, other name very well, but Kate is a spiritual healer and I'm, I've worked um, to support Kate to become a spiritual healer and um, she works with a beautiful team of healing spirits. I've helped train her in that and she um, My spirit team have encouraged her constantly to be working on people because by actually working with people reading the people Michaela that is where you start to refine your skill set. So just go for it lovely seriously, you'll learn along the way and Amanda has said she needs to do that course you were talking about. Oh, yeah. If people want to do mm. that course, how do they have? How, how do they get more info? Yeah, I'll pop a link in the comments. Um, there's a wait list that you can pop yourself on. I'm actually starting the course next week, but it's fully booked. Um, and then I'll probably be running another one uh, towards the end of the year. So you can pop yourself on a wait list there, and I can let you know. I'll put that in the comments. Awesome. And I saw, Kate, you did have a question, but we said we were going to do a 50-minute limit, so maybe we'll save Kate's question for part two. What do you think, Yeah, Trina, yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. Gods and goddesses, Kate. <laughs> absolutely. That's another... F um, that's a, a really interesting topic, actually, so I'm, abs I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to cover that. If any of you have any other questions that you'd like for the next part or people that aren't listening to this live and listen to this later have any more questions, just pop it up there and we'll jump back on another time and chat away. Talk more. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for tuning in and listening to us, uh, which was another thing that we were going to talk about. When you tune into spirit, it's like turning your radio dial and getting it to the right frequency so that you can actually meet with the light of spirit and then start interpreting what you're receiving and if you don't get that dial tuned to the right place and you don't get your favorite radio station and that's something um, that um, I have a course on communicating with spirit that I teach people how to do that as well but that's enough for now so we'll speak to you another time thanks so much for Thank listening you. thanks for your time pleasure Tristan. bye see you everyone